to Sparkman Homestead. My name is Krista and I gotta get these chickens dealt with. Um, I don't know if you remember, but on a couple videos back, I am very delayed with putting videos out also, so <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but on a couple videos back, we did that freezer clean out and now it has been a couple of days. The chicken took two days to defrost. So it is finally defrosted. I parted it out yesterday. So all I did is I cut the drumstick and the thigh and just parted them individual because I figured it would make it easier to can. And that chicken broth, I've actually wanted that to cook for two days just so that it can get really good and healthy. So that is finally ready to get canned. So pretty much today we're just, I'm going to take you guys along with me while I can chicken. I have never canned chicken before. So this is a learning experience for me. Um, I am just taking you guys along. I am not going to teach in any way because again, I am just learning myself how to do it. I have watched a lot of YouTube videos and it seems and I've heard that it is simple to do, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that works for me. What we're gonna do later on today is I'm gonna take you out to the garden and I have to harvest some dill. I want to grab some more rosemary out there. I wanna get that borage and I wanna actually bring in some lettuce. So again, that'll be later on in the day. But right now we gotta deal with this chicken stuff. I went ahead and actually processed my ground chicken yesterday. Because it has to be partially frozen when you are making it, um, it was, Yesterday was the perfect day to do that and unfortunately I didn't get to turning the camera on. I had kind of a busy day doing editing and stuff trying to get caught up with getting these videos out here for you guys. <laughs> so I got that all processed yesterday. That is in my freezer. Well, let's get started on the chicken. I'm actually going to get an apron on because I do not want to be covered in chicken. That is the other thing with this project is I am so freaked out about um, chicken. Like I I am like overly obsessed with making sure everything is so sanitized. I Vinegar is my normal go-to for disinfectant, but when I'm dealing with chicken, I actually break that bleach out. So I wanna have an apron on so that my clothes don't get covered in yuckiness. Okay, so I am using this book as a reference to can today. It is on page 400 on, it's just the chicken, duck, goose, turkey, game bird section. We are raw packing it today, so it says everything has to be at room temperature. Those chicken um, legs are in the fridge, so we actually need to get them out right now. So I put them in the fridge last night after I, them all up because it does say this is a big bowl of chicken legs and chicken thighs or <laughs> drumsticks and chicken thighs it does specify that you have to oh I did take my drawer out I want to put it back in I had to take my kitchen my fridge drawer out yesterday I had to take my drawer out yesterday in order to fit that big bowl in just get that back in there so it did specify in the ball book that you have to chill these for, what does it say, 12, 6 to 12 hours before use. So they are now thawed out, they've been chilled all night in the fridge. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take room temperature jars, these are clean jars, and I am going to just stuff the chicken in. Now we are raw packing again, so we actually are not going to add any liquid to it. My pressure canner is going to have room temperature water in it. So when I add these room temperature jars into that canner, they don't explode because it's not hot going into cold or cold going into hot. So let's get that canner filled up. My head is gonna be cut off a bit, sorry guys, but I want you to be able to kind of see what I'm doing. Okay. I am not a fan of touching raw chicken. I don't know, I love eating chicken. I just don't like touching the raw stuff. These are room temperature quart jars. My canner, I can only put seven quart jars at a time. Now I have to get this broth strained also, but I am gonna be doing that well this 
um, canner is running its first load of these and then we'll get to canning the chicken broth. So a couple videos that I have watched say that it is fine and even the book says it is fine to leave the skin on but I did take the skin off. Now I couldn't get it all off so there are there is still some skin on this one on the top part. So we're going to try to cram as much in here as we can. There are two chicken bread or two drumsticks. Let's see if we can fit like two thighs in here. These are pretty big thighs. These were from Cornish crossbirds that we did. I believe this was our last batch, potentially. I think we did them in, uh, we processed them in May, maybe April. Okay, so you wanna leave, again, I'm not really teaching you guys, I'm just telling you what I've read. It says you wanna leave an inch of headspace. So this jar looks, like that's good. Let's get the other ones filled up. So that one fit two, three drumsticks and two thighs, but they were like really big thighs. Like look at the size of these thighs. Those birds were mammoth. We did the Cornish cross ones, huge, huge birds. They are really nasty birds, but they definitely produce a lot of meat. Good bang for your buck with them. We like raising them. Let's see if we can fit another drumstick in there. Oh no. Yep. Make sure I have that inch head space. for supper and then actually you know what I'm gonna do so this is a bag of cooked meat cooked chicken this is the cooked chicken that we got from those roosters that we put in there and I am left with three thighs here so I think what I'm gonna do as this pressure canner is working I am actually gonna cook these chicken thighs in the oven and that way I can add it to this shredded chicken because I will be canning this also but it will be a different, you have to process um, shredded boneless chicken differently than you process bone-in chicken. These are bone-in chickens that we're doing right now. So I'm gonna cook these, I'm gonna shred that meat, and then when I process these, because I'm gonna do this shredded chicken in pint-sized jars, I'll just add these cooked ones to this lot of meat. So that way I don't have to worry about running the canner again for just three tiny little thighs. One thing that all of the YouTube videos and the book reiterated is make sure your tops are clean. So I am running some vinegar along the top of these. That is not at one inch seal. actually have to cook that one because that is way over one inch. Wash my hands again. This is kind of why I say I'm not really, these aren't really teaching videos. It's more of you guys just coming along and seeing what I'm doing in my kitchen because this is such a learning experience for me. I've never done this before and I don't want to tell you guys to do something and then not have it be the right thing. So definitely when you are doing these things, like do what I did, research it, watch different YouTube videos, read the canning books, definitely do that. But I am such a new beginner when it comes to canning meats. Now we're just going to put the lid on and seal it finger tip tight. And then these are very cold jars, so we're gonna get them in the pressure canner, get the lid on. And I already put the water in the bottom, I filled it up. In these Presto presser, pressure canners, it's really cool, they have little marks on the side of them. So in the book, it actually tells you how much water you need to fill it up to. Okay, let's get the lid on this. Oh, I need to just check the seals first. 
I always just check to make sure my gasket is good, that this thing is good. I check to make sure that I can actually see through this hole, that it's not clogged. And then just, this is just, I do this every single time I do a batch. One time I used this, I actually did not check this, and this thing did not pop when it had the seal. It got jammed up somehow in there, and it didn't pop, so I had to take it off and bring it down to pressure, and so now I always check. Okay, so that is on there securely. Now we are going to turn the burner up. I'm going to put it to about 8. I'll come back, and as it's getting warm, I'll start adjusting the temperature. I usually, like, keep bumping it down throughout the process until I get to like a low. Time to get this chicken broth strained out. So I have a big bowl right here in the sink and I, I'm putting a strainer over top of the bowl and I'm just putting some like, uh, I don't know what it's called, bread. I don't know what this stuff is called. Uh, flour sack, linen, I don't know. Just, you could use a tea towel probably also, but I'm just doing this so that it catches because this strainer has very big holes and I want to make sure I catch everything. I'm just going to turn the, the broth off for a minute. Now we are not canning all of this broth. I am actually going to freeze some of it. meat and stuff in here I'm actually giving to the chickens I didn't give them as much feed this morning because I knew I was going to be doing this and I wanted to I'm just making sure I have enough room in that bowl I think I do just put all of the broth probably going to get a spoon and do the rest of it smooth it around a bit Oh, that's our oven. I'm going to get that chicken into the oven and cooking. I did not salt and pepper that chicken that we put into the oven just because the other stuff is a plain chicken also. And I don't want to add any extra seasoning to it because I don't know what I'm going to be using that chicken for in recipes. And I mean salt and pepper. I know you always salt and pepper stuff, but I just wanted to leave it plain. Okay. I need to get another bowl so that I can have that for the chickens. In the past, I have actually um, dried these bones out and used them in my garden as bone meal, but I'm not feeling it. That is definitely a way to use everything out of the bird, but I mean, I'm going to feed these to the chickens, so I'm still using everything. There's quite a bit of meat in here. But I'm just, instead of me picking through this meat, the way that I'm rationalizing it by giving it to my chickens is that I'm making, with these scraps, I am making eggs. <laughs> I rinsed this thing out. I like to run my um, broth through the strainer twice. So I'm just going to pour this back into here. And I rinsed out this cloth also. And it was pretty good with catching everything. So probably don't need to do this. Perfect. That is the beautiful color of that broth. It is a little lighter because I did not use any onions or carrots with it, so it is a very light um, broth. And the reason I didn't use any other vegetables is because I really wanted just to keep it a plain chicken bone broth. So it is starting to come to a boil. I don't know if you can hear that or not. But we need to wait for that thing to... Sorry, my hands make it blurry. <laughs> We need to wait for that thing to pop up. Look at this top already forming on it. This is, that's fat. 
What I'm doing right now is I'm taking some of this warm chicken broth and I am pouring it into these ice cube trays that I am just going to put into my freezer to freeze. And once they are frozen, I'm just gonna pop them out and put them into a Ziploc baggie in my fridge. I got this idea from a YouTube channel called Homesteading with the Zimmermans. Her name, I believe, is Ruth Ann. I actually follow her on, over on Instagram as well. Uh, her page is just a wealth of knowledge. Anyways, her last video that she posted was called Canning Chicken and Chicken Broth. I will, if I can possibly, I will link it in the description below. Um, but it is, it's amazing. She talks about how she does this and gives it to her family when they are not feeling well or when they are recovering for some, from something. So I will uh, definitely Definitely try to link her because she is 100% the inspiration for me doing this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just plop these into the freezer and then this broth, some of it that we are canning, it has to um, cool a bit before we can can it so that that fat can kind of come to the top. But when you are freezing it, you don't have to wait for that. So it just came to pressure now. So what we're going to do is we're going to let it vent. So I can feel steam coming out of here. We're gonna let it vent for 10 minutes and then we are going to put this um, weighted gauge, we're gonna put that on that. So I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. 10 minute timer went off, so we are gonna put the weighted gauge on it. And now we are going to bring it up to 11 pounds of pressure. And this has to be, because these are quart-sized jars, and these are bone-in, they have to be processed for 75 minutes. So once this comes up to 11 pounds of pressure, then I'm gonna start my timer for the 75 minutes. I completely forgot I had the chicken in here. This is what happens if I don't set a timer. Forget about it. That's cooked, for sure. Just gonna turn the oven off. So we're like, we're gonna let this cool because the other chicken is really, it's it's cold. So I don't wanna put hot and cold into the jar. So we'll, we'll let this cool. Obviously we have a long time to wait for that. We are finally at pressure. Yay. Okay, so now we are going to set the timer for 75 minutes. Nope, that's the microwave. We're gonna set the Timer. There we go. I got this going. So now we are going to hang out in the kitchen for the next 75 minutes. I need to go to Walmart because I need to get some more canning jars. I just kind of did a little bit of an inventory with my canning jars that I have available. And because we are canning that shredded chicken up still. I need pint sized jars for that. Then the chicken broth, I need a lot of pint sized jars for that because that's the size that I actually need for canning. I have, I already have enough quarts in chicken broth but I need to restock my pints. And then I'm also wanting to can some beans and some barbecue sauce this week. And I have hardly any jars upstairs. So I need to swing by Walmart at some point, but because we're waiting for that for 75 minutes, I, I can't go until that's done. So I'm hoping Walmart has cans in stock because if they don't, I don't think I'm gonna be able to can my beans this week. I'll have to wait. I really thought we were over this canning shortage thing. <laughs> My timer just went off for the chicken, so I just slid it off very gently. Not slid it, I moved it off of the burner very gently. So now it's gonna come down to pressure. I have my supper in the oven right now cooking, so I am going to go and do, the supper has about 10 more minutes, so I'm gonna go up and quickly do some computer work and then run to Walmart once I can take that supper out of the oven. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, they have those canning jars. This has come down in pressure. I've set a timer for 10 minutes, so now I'm gonna take the weight off. I am going to take the lid off. And now I'm gonna set the timer for five more minutes so I can kind of let these kind of come, cool down a little bit more and come to like 
not room temperature, but get acclimated to that being open. I'm just looking quickly to see if I have any broken jars. When I canned beef stew, I must have not had the water and the beef stew at the same temperature because I actually ended up breaking two jars in the canner. So now I am like petrified every time I use this thing that I'm going to have blown out jars. But it's it's bubbling in there. It's, it's exciting. The whole house smells like chicken. And it's like, it's almost like an overwhelming chicken smell. Like I don't want to eat chicken tonight. I probably won't want to eat it tomorrow, tomorrow night either. It's like when we process our birds, it's, there's like a good solid two days where I don't want to look at a chicken. I don't want to smell chicken and I certainly don't want to eat chicken. It's, it just has a smell about it. And today doing this broth and canning these chickens, it's got a smell about it. <laughs> I mean, I love chicken. I'm not I'm not in any way, shape, form saying I'm not going to eat chicken again, but it has a smell about it. <laughs> Let's get these jars out of here. Moment of truth. Wow. There is definitely some siphoning because I am seeing like oils in the, not oils, but like chicken broth, chicken fat. Yay, we have no explosions. Look at the yummy bubbly chicken. So remember guys how I put no liquid in these at all? Look at all that liquid that the chicken ended up producing on its own. We are back from Walmart and look what they had in stock. So I got three jars because I am planning on making barbecue sauce and canning some beans. Plus I have all that broth to can. So I need those. Those are pint size regular mouth jars. And then if you watched my last video, I finally found some half gallon jars. I'm super excited about that. So I picked up a box of those. I want to get outside with you guys and pick some rosemary. So I am going to get this uh, chicken pieces, like they're just shredded chicken. I'm going to get these put into here and then I am going to top them with some broth. Now because the broth is cold, the chicken is cold, my water in the pressure canner is also cold. So these ones I have to process also for 75 minutes at... 11 pounds or 10 pounds of pressure. So just getting them put all into the jars. And I'm making a huge mess at it also. <laughs> I don't know why it is I'm making such a mess. Goodness gracious. Probably because I'm in a hurry because I want to get outside before the sun sets get that rosemary with you guys. These are pint jars also. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. And the reason I'm only doing pint jars is because this is perfect for just me and Steven. This would be a perfect amount of meat for us for one meal. And then it's the same situation where it's one inch of headspace. Okay, so let's get the cold broth in here. See all of the fat on top of that. I'm gonna try to not get it in the jars because you don't want as much, you don't want fat really in the jars because it can compromise the seal. because apparently I can like a toddler. <laughs> Spill it everywhere. Okay, jars 
and rims are all cleaned off. So we are just gonna get this again into room temperature water. Actually, it's probably kind of cooler water because we wanna bring these all up to temperature at the same time. Oh, where's my lid? Oh, there it is. Probably gonna take a while to come up to temperature. So we'll go outside while we're waiting for that. does not go on now that would have been a mistake let's get outside while that is coming to pressure I have my bowl with some scissors and we are going to harvest I think maybe rosemary for sure and then we'll get some of this lavender you know it's five o'clock and the sun is already setting Ugh. <sighs> Need to be happy with this time of year. Okay, let's get this harvested. There we go. Okay, so we've got some rosemary here. The neighbor is mowing his lawn. I'm just going to pick a bunch of it because... I really need some rosemary. I'm trying to get all the stalks. I think that's all I'm gonna take and time we are really good for time so we don't really need to harvest any of that I kind of wanted to make a uh, sage tincture but it calls for four ounces of dried sage and I don't that's a lot of sage so I don't know we're on me um, I don't have a lot up in here the oregano this is why I was saying in my pantry tour right here because I don't ever need to buy oregano it's still very good I'm gonna grab these lavenders right here I'm actually thinking of I'm thinking of doing a video with you guys making some soap um, not with lye, with this, um, it's called a melt and pour soap. You don't need to add any of the lye because I'm not comfortable enough to use that stuff. But this is a really easy to do soap recipe. So I think I'm going to maybe use some of this lavender in the soap. Oh, Mr. Bumblebee, you're still here. Are you sleeping? There's a bumblebee on the... He's fallen asleep on there, or maybe he's too cold for there. Hmm. So what else do we want to harvest? We got lavender, we've got rosemary. Let's grab these calendulas also. We've got this, look at this big, beautiful calendula. So we're gonna grab that one. I actually make a face wash, and I put calendula in the face wash. So there's some that will be blooming soon, so we'll just leave those ones. Um, parsley. Do I want to bring parsley in? No, that'll be fine in here over the winter. I, I'm i definitely feeling like this was not a good idea coming out here while I'm waiting for the pressure canner to come to temperature because I got to get inside just in case it comes to temperature sooner than I thought. But it is sunset. Oh. Okay, let's, let's do this quick. Can we go to the garden quickly? Oh, I don't know if we can. So in that last video that I did with you guys when I was out here building these hoop houses, I had said, and I was wondering what was eating my kale plant. And in the video, and I had to rewatch it when I was editing it, it was a cabbage worm out here. Oh, and look at all of these eggs on the back of here. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna pull that out. Yeah, they're, I did not think that cabbage worms would have been an issue. We are, today is November the 1st. 
This just shows you how far behind I am on editing. But today is November the 1st, and I did not think that I was gonna have to deal with cabbage worms in November. But I guess it's been so warm. I can't see any now. So I came out the second that I was editing that video and seen it was a cabbage worm, and he's gone now. I can't find him on any of these leaves. But he has definitely, he has definitely been here because these are getting all chewed up. I wonder what ends up killing cabbage worms. Like, how long do I have to wait for them to die? I don't know. I'm wondering if I should put some diet, diatomestric earth, DE. I'm wondering if I should sprinkle some DE out here. Maybe that will help. I don't know. What did I come out here for? <laughs> Rosemary, lavender, and a calendula plant. Um, and then maybe some more cilantro, I think. Actually, not cilantro. I realized I actually have some in the fridge already. But I wanted to show you guys this really cool thing. Oh, yeah, I was going to pick that. Hold on. Hold on. Look at this. Look at all my snow peas. I actually, there is a couple. This one's ready to be harvested. And this one is ready to be harvested. There's some hiding over there also. I think those ones are also ready. I didn't think that one could actually go a little bit longer. But let's get these little guys over here. Here's one right here. That one's pretty fat. Yay! I kind of want to harvest that. Hmm. This guy over here has lots of flowers. This is another pea plant. Look at the big guy right here. I'll definitely get some peas because we have some pretty mild temperatures the next week or two. That's exciting. Oh, beautiful sunset. Let's get back in the house. Check this canner. Woo! We're safe. It's not steaming yet. Good. That makes me happy. So I have a little um little table over here this is kind of my drying station i have a whole bunch of lavender that actually needs to be put away it is already dried um and then i have i'm just gonna put these ones we just picked on here that is a rosemary not lavender oh my gosh it smells like heaven we're gonna put our big harvest of four snow peas in the fridge. I actually might just eat these with my supper. I made a tomato pie for supper tonight. Steven is actually gone this week. He is in Vegas. So I am solo this week and I am making everything that he does not like. Last night for supper, I made raspberry pancakes and I made the tomato pie today because it has onions in it so I knew he wouldn't like it. Um, and then tomorrow night I am doing sloppy joes and then I also have veggie pot pie on the schedule so super excited about that but tonight with my tomato pie I am having some greens that I canned up I canned them with some bacon so I'm excited to try these for the first time these are actually soapy so I can eat the outside of them forgot a little rinse I don't even need to wait for supper mm, they're so good yeah, are so so good we've had like some cold nights too so they are like super sweet okay so for the rosemary I think I'm just gonna put it bunch it up with some twine and hang it from my windows I don't want to turn the dehydrator on for just this tiny little small bit it, it's it smells amazing I love it anyways I don't want to turn my dehydrator on for this tiny little bit of rosemary. It'll take a lot of energy to do that when I can just let it naturally dry with the window. Okay, let's get it up a bowl. Just kind of making sure that they're all about the same length from the bottom. Some little ones that I picked in here. Just take the twine. Just kind of wrap it around a couple times. We used to have this 
really nice chandelier where it was like perfect. I could just hang all my herbs from it, but we had to take it down because um, we needed to have a fan in here. There was no fan and we need circulation in here when it's like in the springtime. So I'm gonna hang this on the window on the curtain rod and it just makes the house smell just it almost gives it like a clean smell and then I, when I do the holy basil and hang it oh my gosh you do not need candles you do not need air sprays it's just heavenly so let me get this hang hung up we have six minutes left on that canner for those um homeless shredded chicken all I'm doing right now is these are the chicken broth that we um, put in the freezer. I'm just throwing them in a bag. I'm actually going to label this bag. And then I'm going to throw another batch into the freezer. Okay, I just put plain chicken broth. That way I know that these are for to go into teas. want to get another little batch put into the freezer also. And I think I'm going to leave this in my kitchen freezer. That way it's accessible. Well, I mean, it's accessible either way if it's in the garage, but it's quicker for me to get at. That fat is really starting to um, come to the top. Now I am going to be canning the rest of this broth, so I have to reheat it in order to can broth. So what I need to do is I need to pour this cold broth because now that the fat is kind of settled, I need to take the fat off, pour this cold broth into these uh, pans, and then I have to heat it up. And then I have to add the hot broth to hot jars to a hot canner. Once that canner is done with that load, I'm going to let it kind of cool down a, a minute and then I will throw these other ones in. My jars are staying hot right now. I'm just scraping the fat off and giving it to the chickens. Okay guys, it is now 20 after 7 and I am definitely feeling that I have been in this kitchen all day canning chicken. So I am not going to can that broth up tonight. I've actually decided against it because it is such a fatty broth. Like I can feel it on the spoon whenever I touch it. It's got a lot of fat in it. So I want to give that broth an opportunity to have that fat come up to the surface and by keeping it in the fridge overnight it will do that and it will also gel up. So I am going to leave that and I'm going to get to that in the morning. Tomorrow is my Amish day so I will get to that broth as soon as I get home. But I am actually headed to the couch right now. I am going to make myself a glass of or a mug of hot chocolate and I am going to go and relax. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Well, I hope you guys have a great day or evening whenever you're watching this, and I will see you on the next video. Bye, guys. It's kind of dark in here, but I wanted to show you guys what that shredded chicken is.